I want to talk about patterns of design for women in terms of hair restoration. Now, the thing is, I could spend hours talking about the different designs that are out there that I think about, and each particular design is different and customized to a female. The, there are, first of all, two major classifications. One is general density for the female hair, and the second one is a frontal temporal, uh, sorry, a frontal temporal restoration of the scalp to, to rebuild a, a female hairline, either through aging and loss. Uh, it could be transgender, uh, such as I'm doing today. It could be the fact that the person it just wants a lower hairline. Uh, but this discussion is not about female hairline lowering. It's specifically about density. Like, what are the patterns to create better density for women? The problem for women is that density uh, is hard because oftentimes they have more, they have sparser donor hair and they have a wide area of loss and they have hairstyles that mandate a fullness or thickness across the whole thing. So, I do a ton of females. I would say about 35% of my patients are females, sometimes up to 50% in a, in a given week. So a very large number of women compared to other places where they may do a female once every two years. So I do quite a few females. I also I didn't classify like scar uh, correction, facelift corrections, eyebrow corrections. Of course, there's many other indications for female hair loss in terms of transplantation. I'm really focused today on general macro big design pictures for women that experience hair loss. So first of all, women typically lose hair in what's called a Christmas tree pattern. In other words, if you look at their, their head tilted down, it looks sort of like a Christmas tree where the back of the scalp is narrower hair loss and there's a much wider hair loss in the front of the scalp sometimes involving this hair, hairline, sometimes not involving the hairline. So it looks like sort of a, a triangle, if you will. Um, Elise Olson calls it a Christmas tree. In that shape, oftentimes the design would be such that you would design a larger frontal zone, a smaller uh, that tapers all the way to the back. So sort of a Christmas tree or triangle shape design. And that's one type of design. The other modification of that is if there's enough donor la uh, available uh, and the distribution can be in such a way that the crown can be transplanted. Oftentimes women just have a thinning of the central portion of their crown where they're just not creating enough lift to it. So they want to create a better lift to the crown. And so I call that the double dumbbell or dumbbell design where there's a bigger circle in the front, which is the, the central forelock and there is a smaller dumbbell on the back in the crown area, and then there's this expansion going from the small dumbbell to the larger dumbbell. The other uh, design pattern is then talking about T's and L's. So uh, oftentimes for, for women, I need to create enough density by not scattering the transplant to the four winds, but concentrating and focusing on the areas for maximal results. So a T-shaped is basically a modification of what I just mentioned. The T is sort of upside down, if you will, where the horizontal bar is in the front of the scalp. And then the, the central part zone, if you part your hair in the center, would be the, the line going back. And then an L shape would be just that same frontal line. And then over to the left part, or I guess that would be maybe a reverse L. And then the other a reverse L would be uh, a line drawing from a part on the right side going forward and then that frontal central forelock zone. So these T's and L's, reverse L's, basically emphasize the idea that you want to transplant the scalp in a way for maximal effects without scattering everywhere. And the zone of most importance is going to be that central forelock, in other words, the frontal part of the scalp. And then choosing a left-sided part, a right-sided part, or a central part. That usually is more effective than trying to put hair everywhere. It oftentimes, if you put hair everywhere, you may not get enough visual density. It's better to try to focus the density in a certain area if possible. All of this is discussed in my lectures on female hair restoration, on my textbooks I've written on the subject, uh, et cetera. But hopefully this concept of just how to create the most favorable density gradients and patterns for women on a macroscopic level makes sense.